Hi guys, I wanted to show you guys my new digital printable that I have over at my Etsy shop. It is an instant download and it, I'm going to show you what it, what's all included in it um, and talk about it a little bit. And what it's for is the tag shaped art journal or journal, it doesn't have to be an art journal. And this is mine, this is the one I've been working on or in. See, ooh. Um, but, it, but the printable comes with three different cover choices. There's a green, there's a purple, of course, and then there's the vintage color. And then each one of the covers comes with a matching background or liner page. So there's the green and the purple, and then the vintage. And what also comes with it is some templates. There's three templates for um, cutting out your covers and your pages. And the whole point of the templates is so that you don't have to measure anything. You can just use these templates, cut them out, use them, trace around them, and it just makes it so much easier and quicker. You don't have to think about the measurements and all of that stuff. You just trace and cut. So this is the template for if you're wanting to do like a Coptic stitch binding and it's two separate pieces and it already has the holes marked for where you punch your holes and there's some directions there but it can also be used for uh, like a like binder rings or the uh, bind it all or anything that you would have two separate covers for so this one um, can be used in many 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 different ways and then it comes with another cover template that has a spine so when it's all put together it's still taped uh, taped it's still shaped like a like a tag, uh, but it has a spine, and it also has holes already marked in it. Um, there's white and black holes, and the white holes are for if you want to do like a writing journal, or you're going to do sketch paper or something, so you can add more pages. So there's five white holes for that, and then there's three black holes, and that's if you're wanting to do like um, like art, like mixed media, thick paper, and you're wanting to use a lot of dimension. So that way you have three signatures, and you have a little bit more room in your in your journal. So there's the cover template. You could use recycled uh, material like cereal boxes. You could use, um, you know, regular chipboard. Anything really. You can you can use this as long as it'll bend. You know, you have to. It has to bend. And then it comes with a page template. Um, and this is you, this is really useful too for not just the page template, but you can actually use it for covers and stuff too. It's really quite interesting. It's got a lot of. A lot of interesting little details in it. I did want to mention that these are created uh, by me. They're not digitally created. They are handmade um, and designed by me. So I just wanted to mention that. And this page template also too has the three holes where you would poke your holes when you're doing the Coptic stitch. But again, this can also be used as covers. So that's pretty cool. That way you can just cut this out and fold it over and trace around it and easy peasy. And then for a bonus, like a little extra, I decided to go ahead and um, add some tags and tabs that kind of match the whole thing. Um, some of them are tiny, like little tags and double-sided. These are double-sided if you want them to be double-sided. So there's a whole bunch of those, you know, just in case you want to put tabs in your journal. So that's included. And what else is included but in the listing, there are three zip drive, or drives, three zip files that contain all of the the printable part and then there's a PDF file and in that PDF file is a link to a video and that video will show you exactly how to make this uh, Coptic stitch journal exactly uh, I'll get the one that I actually made made so this is the one we're going to make in the video it's step by step on how to put this one together um, and then inside that video, in the description of that video, there are three more bonus videos. Um, and they're, they're a lot of fun. I'm going to show you really quickly without you seeing too much detail of how many journals I've made making these videos. Whoa! Alright, that's all you get to see. Um, but they're a lot of fun and I'm a little goofy. But I do want to tell you that <clears throat> anytime I refer to a saddle stitch, I meant to say a pamphlet stitch, so I just wanted to clear that up really quickly. Uh, let's see, so we're going to be using some, uh, in those videos, we're going to be using some recycled material, we're going to be repurposing, we're going to be making some storage type journals, we're going to be making some simple just notebooks, just all kinds 
But I do want to share with you what we're going to be making in this video. And it's this journal right here. Isn't that pretty? Um, it's step by step on how I made this journal. And then there's like three more, three or four, three more, I think three more journals um, that I talk about in this video too. So be sure to head over to my Etsy shop and check it out. Like I said, you get 10 printable instant download pages and then you get four additional bonus videos. One shows you exactly how to make my art journal and then three more showing you all kinds of, I wish I would have counted. There's probably like nine or 10 different types of journals that I made in those bonus videos. All right, so be sure to leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the videos. Um, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below and I hope you enjoy the video. I'll see you later. Bye. We're gonna be using this cover template that has all the holes on the spine there or the markings on the spine. And I'm gonna be using the five holes. I'm gonna make like a writing journal. Uh, so I've already cut out this template to save time and I've already cut out the page template to save time. Um, and I'm gonna be using this, this fabric, this canvas fabric pad. Um, and it's really cool too because it's got a paper backing. So it makes it a little bit sturdier. And this is from, oh, uh, this is Hobby Lobby. This is really fun stuff to work with. So we're gonna, we're gonna need two sheets of this. So what I want to do first is I want to um, attach these two things together, these two sheets together. I'm gonna use my PVA glue and I'm gonna attach the whole thing together, or most of it together um, as best I can. And I'm just gonna put a bunch out on here. And then you just want to lay the other one over top. Try to match up the edges pretty good. And just give it a good press. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to grab something to give it a good burnish. A good flat. This is a the Teflon bone folder. Just to make sure that it's got a good seal between the two. So now I'm going to bring back my template. Let me move some stuff out of the way here. And I'm not going to go all the way to the edge, but just in case I didn't get the edge really good. It actually looks like I got the edge really good on this end. But on the other, on these two edges, maybe I didn't get it so good. So I'm going to just line it up like this. And with my pencil, I'm just going to mark it. Well, my camera shut off. I'm not sure where it shut off at. So I traced out the template onto my, to my canvas, my two sheets of canvas. Traced it out all the way around. And then I marked where the the spine score lines are going to be on the top whoa, on the top and the bottom so now i've just grabbed my big tim holtz uh, fabric scissors and i'm just going to trim it out i'm just going to go straight across too i'm not going to do that dip yet So save this piece too because I have something else um, we can do with this. I'll show you later. Okay, so now what I want to do with this is I'm going to do, let me find, reach it here. I'm going to use this fabric transfer paper. It's really some cool stuff. If you have an inkjet printer, make sure you get the inkjet. If you have a laser, make sure you get the laser. But all you do is it runs through your printer just like any other sheet of paper. And when you go to print it out, like when I, I've already trimmed it out, but when you go to print it out, if there's wording on there, you need to make sure that you do the mirror image, uh, like kind of reverse it so that when you go to iron it on, it irons on the correct way, but there's directions. So just follow your directions of whatever one you happen to find. So I've went ahead and cut these, printed them out. 
and cut them out. And then I also printed out one of the background sheets. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cover uh, the entire back side with this sheet. So what I'm going to do now is move this out of the way. I'm going to take this cover template again and I'm going to trace around it. I'm going to line it up to two edges and then I'm going to trace around it and trim it out just like I did the canvas. Oh, well that's interesting. It's kind of scratching off the image instead of laying down a mark. I didn't know it was going to do that. That's pretty cool. Whoa. All right, I don't know if you all can see it, but I can see it. You see that white line that's going across there? Yeah, it just scraped it off. That's cool. All right, so now I'm going to trim this out. You can just use regular scissors, but I think I'm going to trim it out just beneath the line, or on this side of the line versus the outside. And I probably should have used my paper trimmer, but... You know what? I am going to use my paper trimmer. That way we got a good straight line. Hold on, I'm going to get it. Hang on. Alrighty. So I'm just going to line this up to where it's cutting on the inside of that line and not the outside. Because I don't want it to go over. Right, and then I'm going to trim out. I am going to trim out this notch. So when I go to iron this on, I'm not going to, I'm going to make sure that this piece gets ironed on to the side that does not have the markings on it. So it's going to go like this. Let's make sure it fits first. Uh, whoops, I didn't cut all the pieces. So you want to double check, and if it's hanging over anywhere, you want to go ahead and trim that off. It doesn't have to be exact either, because it's not. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do this on camera because I don't have room for my iron and everything, my ironing board. So what you do is you iron it on this way, you iron that on, follow the directions, you flip it over, and then you iron these two pieces on. You make sure you iron these two pieces on where the score marks are. So you iron these two, and do not remove the paper until you've ironed both sides. If you do that, it'll start, if you remove the paper, it'll stick to whatever surface you're using. So I'm going to go iron these on. I'm not going to take the paper off yet, so you'll be able to see, and I'll be right back. All right, I've got it all ironed on. There's the front cover. And then there's the back cover. I did test it a little bit to see, to make sure that it was ironed on there really good. So now I'm going to peel it off. Look how cool that is. So cool. All right, let's do the front cover, the front part of the cover. I can grab a piece. So now, since I printed it in reverse or mirror image, now you can see the words. Like it has like um, journey and journal and journalism and but yeah, doesn't that look cool? I think so. So awesome. All right. Next step, I'm going to score the spine there. I'm going to grab my scoreboard. And there it is. Got my bone folder. And I think if I did it right, it should match up to four and three fourths on the board there. You have to go slow. Whoopsie, I got off. You have to go slow to make sure you stay in that channel. 
And you want to do it a couple times. And then it should go, it should match up to the five and three fourths mark. You really want to give it some pressure. Okay, and then you want to flip it over and do the same thing on the back side. Alright, and use your board to help keep it lined up and then you want to kind of burnish that score mark there. Like that. You want to do both sides. So now the book is starting to take shape. See? Isn't that cool? I love, love this fabric transfer idea. I'm gonna move this board out of the way. All right, now, now I'm gonna go ahead and take this notchy part out. I just wanna make sure that I had the marks for my score marks. And I'm gonna go right on inside there. Just like that. So there we go, now we have its completely tag shaped covers. All right, we're gonna put these aside for now, or this aside for now, and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do for the pages. Okay, so I told you I wanted to do like a writing journal for this one, so I had found this like block, like this journal block for like a refillable leather journal, I guess. And I think they had them on clearance, and so I grabbed a couple because, you know, you always need paper, lined paper, who doesn't, right? So, but it, one draw, it is signatures. One drawback is that it's got a lot of glue on there. But if you do it really carefully, you can pull these off of the spine there, just like that. And then the outer page will have the glue on the spine, the outer two pages, the front and back. So you just, you know, pull those off and use those for something different because I think it might get in the way for this technique. So I've been, I pulled off a bunch of them and I've got, I've got a few right here. And so I'm just going to, I'm just going to um, trim them down to size because here's the, here's the spine. And I already taken that outside page off and it's still a signature. So what's cool about that is that now I can sew it onto my spine of my book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the spine intact and I'm gonna, let's see, how do I wanna do this? I'm gonna lay my page template that I'd already trimmed out. I'm gonna fold it in half and I'm gonna line it up in the top part and I'm gonna line it up on the spine edge and then I'm gonna trace it out This pencil, I need to get a new one. I guess I've dropped it. I'm gonna trace it out just like that. Oops, I forgot one. And I'm gonna do that for all three. I have three left. I've done the rest of them to save time. So the reason, you're probably wondering why are you doing it this way, why aren't you just trimming it out on your paper trimmer? Yes, you can just trim them out on your paper trimmer, but also I wanted to do it this way because I wanted to show you guys that you don't have to have, you don't have to measure. You can just use the template. Everything I've done so far, you can just use the template that you get in the printable and just trace around and use your scissors. So this is six sheets of paper I'm going through, so let's see if just regular old scissors will go through there you know, not fancy scissors. Now see what happens when you when you do it when you cut it wrong. <laughs> it didn't cut perfectly straight. But that's okay. I don't mind. When you cut a bunch of sheets of paper together, that's kind of what happens, isn't it?
So that's not the, the straightest of edges, but that's okay because what I'm going to do with them next, it's not really going to matter if it's perfectly straight cut or not. You can also take your, whoa, sorry about that, your cutting mat and lay your ruler and your craft knife or your box cutter, whatever you happen to have had out lately. And line it up and trim it off that way. Alright, so now what I want to do is I'm going to show you the ones I've already got finished. Um, I'm going to get this effect, this old, um, crinkly, warped looking effect with just water. I'm not going to use any ink. I'm not going to uh, change anything up. We're just going to use water and we're going to get them to look like that. So all I'm going to do is take a spray bottle full of water and just spray. It doesn't matter how much of it gets wet. Paper can absorb plenty of water before it starts ripping and tearing. So we're just spraying all the edges. And then you can either let them air dry, which is basically what I did with these, because I did these before, you know, obviously ahead of time. So then I'm just gonna dry the edges. They're already starting to get crinkly. See, that's cool. It's quick, easy, and it makes your pages look old. So I'm gonna do this and I'll be back. Okay, so now I've got it all dry. I'm just gonna add it to the rest of the signatures. I've got five of them here. So the next step I think we're gonna do is we're gonna put the holes in the cover. So what we're gonna need is the cover template back out. And I think first, what I'm going to do is poke the hose using a, a foam pad underneath it with my pokey tool. And since I'm doing five signatures, let me scoot in closer. Okay, since I'm doing five signatures, I am going to do all the white holes. Whoops, I just poked the wrong hole. I poked a black hole. <laughs> oh, and it's okay because you can use the same template for an art journal too and need the black holes. Whoa, a little close, a little close. There we go. See, I didn't mean to poke that black hole, but all the white ones, always use the middle, whether you're making a journal or an art journal, um, but, but you choose whether you want white or black depending on which one you're making. So I'm gonna poke all the white holes just like that. Yep. Okay. And so since this will be hard to poke through using, you know, just going through like this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm just going to see if it'll mark on there. Let me get it on there just right. That, you know what? I'm going to clip it so that I know that it's on there just right. There. All right, so I'm going to mark a hole here, and I'm going to see if it, if it marked. Yes, yes it did. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my Sharpie, and I'm going to go down through all them white holes. All right, let's hope that that went through on every hole. You probably can't see it really good, but yeah, all of the holes did mark. Now I'm going to get that black thing back here. Now I'm going to use the pokey tool. And I'm just going to carefully poke through each one of those dots that I made. There we go. Can you see where I poked the hose? All right, so I'm going to do that all the way. I'm going to make them a little bigger, actually. I'm going to wiggle them. All right, so the next step is going to be the holes, poking the holes in the pages. So you're going to need your page template. Remember it's got the white 
um, dots on the on the spine on the the score mark there. So you want to open it up and you want to flip it the other way around and open up to your signatures to your center of your signature. I don't know if I said this earlier, but those three little signatures that I had, I just piled them together to make one signature. So I've got five of those sets. And you, all you do, just line it up in there. Oops. How many times am I gonna do that today? I never put my lid back on it, I don't know. So you just wanna line it up and poke right through that white hole, poke through all of them. poking through a lot of pages it is a little bit harder just like that so now all the hose are poking now these already had been sewn together so they already have some holes somewhere but I'm trying not to pay any attention to that um, so there's the three holes that up so I'm gonna do that to each one of these signatures and I will be right back. So I've got all my holes poked in my signatures and I got my holes poked in my cover. So now I'm going to attach these with some crochet thread to my cover and I'm just going to use the saddle stitch and I'm going to go from the inside of the signature, make sure I've got the center here, um, to the outside of the spine. So you just want to start in the center and find the matching center hole, the first set in your spine. And leave a tail so you can tie a knot and then go to the top hole. Whoops, I need to try to make sure I stay on the on camera there. Pull it through and then match up the top hole in your paper signature there. And go all the way down to the bottom and match it up onto the canvas spine. Pull it without losing your tail. Hang on to that tail. And then go back through that center, up through that center hole. And through that signature, if you can, Try to get it out all in one swoop. And then you want to make sure that your needle goes on the other side of that string so that you're trapping it in there. Oops. Come on, thread. What do we got going on here? Oh. Just like that. So that thread is in the middle of these two. See that? So you just want to pull, not super, super, super tight, just want to pull it to where there's nothing loose. You don't want to rip through the signature and tie it off. Just like that. And then you want to just cut it off. And I would, I'll come back to glue that um, later, but there's one signature sewed in there. All right, let's do another one. You don't have to put this much thread on your needle. I just did that so I wouldn't have to thread my needle five times. Same thing. You start with another signature. You find the center. Start on the inside center hole. And go to the corresponding hole on the spine. Pull. Hold the, oops, sorry, hold the tail and then go through the top canvas hole and then through the, whoops, paper signature, just like that. Pull it tight. Uh-oh, hang on, I got a little baby knot I got to take care of real quick. Okay, I got it. Oops, got it upside down here. All right, and go back to holding my tail there. And then we want to go all the way down to the bottom hole. 
through the signature and then through the spine and hole that matches. Pull it through, then go back through the center hole. Whoops, let me pull it just a little tighter. Back through the center hole and through the signature and try to come out on the right side of the string. See, just like that. And then you want to give it a little tug this way and that. And tie it off. There's number two. Okay, so there we go. All of the signatures are now sewn in. I promise you it's not that hard. I just have the um, book far away from me, so when I'm trying to sew it in, I, I probably got off of, of the screen a little bit. I'm sorry, but um, it's hard to hold your arms way out and try to sew something <laughs> together. So, they're all sewn in. It's really, really, look at how fat it got. I wasn't going to put a closure on this, but I think since the paper is so chunky now, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a closure so that it stays closed a little bit better. So I know I didn't put anything on the spine to leave anything extra for closure, so I'm going to grab some coordinating seam binding and I'll be right back. Okay, I found some cream. I think it'll look really pretty. So what I'm going to do, this is uh, just seam binding, snug hug. Seam binding. Oh, let me show you what it looks like. Also, share a little organizational tip with you. This is all my seam binding. Well, not all of it, but some of it. See all the pretty colors? Well, I put it in this basket like this so that when I want some, it just pulls right out. So this is what it looks like before it's crinkled. And I use it like this straight up all the time, too. So just a little organizational tool. I love these little baskets, these little metal baskets. They hold quite a few rolls there. Anyway, just an idea. Okay, so now I'm going to take some seam binding. And I think I'm going to try to measure it this time. I think I want it to go around and tie a bow around the front. So here's what I'm going to do. Since I didn't leave any anything on the spine to do that with, I'll flatten around here a little bit. I think I'm just going to try to weave it underneath each one of these strings. Oops. I don't know if you can see really closely what I'm doing, but my hands I'm sure in the way. Come on. Let's give myself a little bit more leeway here. Just lift it up and push it underneath there. Oh, I got two that time. Hey. Aha, like that. So now we got it underneath there, and I'm going to make sure it's even, both sides. So then, whoa. So then I think I'm going to tie a knot right there tighten it up a little bit and tie just tie a regular knot just like that and then I think what I'm going to do is let me get it straighter I'm going to run it under the topper the topper the top portion. Let's see if that'll work. I don't want to break my string. Wouldn't that just be horrible? Like that. And then tie another knot. Just like that. 
so this is what I ended up with. Nothing too fancy. And then, just to close it, just wrap it around like that. And tie a bow. Just like that. I'm gonna trim off this little bit extra. That's all I had left over. What? Go me. So there, there's my new writing journal. You could ink the edges. You could ink the edges of the canvas. You can do just about anything with this. Anything at all. So let me show you the, okay, so this, remember this piece of leftover uh, that has the double, you know, glued down, double-sided. I'd also printed out a smaller versions. The printer uh, has different settings. You can print it out to reduce it or enlarge it. And I put it on the uh, transfer paper and then you can, you know, iron those on to these, cut it out, and look, look at this, look, cute little, right? Is that not the cutest? This one has three signatures, and I used two eyelets, and just did the two-hole method, and let me open it up for you. Is this not cute or what? So it's, I ironed on, it's the same one I printed out two at a time, so I ironed that on. I did the inside. I had also printed it out the the background page onto that transfer paper. And I printed, I ironed that on the back side, and then when I sewed these signatures in, see it's just a two-hole, two-hole binding. Easy, easy peasy. And then tied it together uh, on the spine here, and then that's my closure. Isn't that sweet? It's some, it's really, I think it's really gonna be handy for like in your purse or something. It's a little notebook really good idea. So you can also make canvas tags out of this too. Yeah, I know. Go figure, right? So there's another idea. Here's um, one I did where I used the cover of my mixed media paper and I covered it with the, with the printable. And then I sewed three signatures in for an art journal. I used three different color um, crochet threads tied a knot and then when I, I the back the inside liner I just used that background page just like I did with the um yeah where, is it, where, where am I going <laughs> just like I did with this one I went all the way to the edge um, and I distressed it a little bit more and then this this mixed media paper and I distressed the edges of it too so it looks kind of cool. So it's a nice little recycle project. Um, you can put watercolor paper, you can put craft paper, you can put cardstock, you can put drawing paper, any anything, any anything. Um, but that's again using the page template. I just this <laughs> is so pretty. It turned out to be one of my favorite um, papers. And then I just on the end there, I just put um, a tag that has my business name on it. Just thought it was cute. And then. This one is another canvas journal, just like the one we just did, except um, there's three signatures, and I'm pretty sure I did the three hole binding. Yep. And when I added this seam binding, I actually came from the inside and came through the holes, that center hole there with the seam binding, so that it was coming out of the holes instead of wrapped around the, I needed this one to be a little bit stronger, and I'll show you why. Inside, um, it's the same iron-on transfer idea, but inside is, you remember when I did the brag book, uh, how to make your own brag book uh, video? It's the same concept where I took the page protectors and I cut them down to size, and then I put the inserts, the inserts in there to make them more sturdy. And what I'm keeping in here is die-cut old book pages which I do that a lot if I've got little scraps and stuff. So there's flowers and tags and more tags and some, you know, different little pieces, just odds and ends here and there. Right, is this not cute? Okay, so it's the same thing. There's the signature, there's the center of it where I sewed it together. Let me look at it really closely. Oh, you know what? I did not do the three hole binding. I did two holes. But there were already three holes poked for a three-hole binding, but I just did two holes. 
and then tied a knot in the center there, just like that. I get I don't know why I did that, but that's the way I did it. So there you go. So then when I put the seam binding in there, that hole was empty. I don't know if you can tell in there. Can you see the seam binding? So that's how I added the seam binding. I don't know why I thought, I wonder why I did that. Oh well, it doesn't matter. It works all the same. So this one has three signatures and each one of them is sewn in separately. But this can get really full. And what's really nice about the, the canvas, it's really, really flexible. It'll be able to really expand with how much stuff I end up putting in here. So there's another good idea for storage and organizing. Um, I really love it. I really, I think I'm going to make one for a, a lot of different stuff. We'll see if you can come up with any other ideas. Just let me know. All right, so there we go. We have three, four different journals using that one template, this cover template with the spine. We have an art journal where I use the three holes. And we have the journal I just made where I use the five holes and it's the, you know, the journaling book. And then my storage journal and then my little baby purse size journal. It's so cute. This is so much fun. This will be a great little gift for somebody um, to carry around with them. I'm always jotting down notes. Okay, well, that is it. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like this video and leave a comment below if you have any more ideas for maybe this organizing uh, journal or any idea period for using this printable. Be sure to head over to my Etsy shop and check it out. Uh, and let me know what you think. Um, I hope you give it a try, and I will see you next time. Bye.